Hi, this is Luke D's Bio 1 Neuroscience class, and here's a three minute uh, lesson on polar and nonpolar. All right, so here we go. Um, there's a couple words we have to learn first, and that's hydrophobic. That means the same thing as basically nonpolar, which means the same thing as no partial charges. Get in your Nick Resnick. Can you see that pretty clearly? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, we're also going to need hydrophilic, <clears throat> which means polar, which means there are going to be different charges. Now, I've only got three minutes, so I've got to make this quick. But these are the terms you need to memorize. The next thing you need to understand is basically this chart. Okay. Up here is how badly things want electrons. So, for example, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, phosphate, they all want electrons really badly. Carbon and hydrogen don't want them as badly. So, when you have any of these things sharing a bond, this chart will give you how strongly they pull electrons. So, for example, if you have carbon, attached to a hydrogen with a covalent bond, then that carbon is going to pull the electrons with the same strength that the hydrogen is going to pull them. That's going to mean that there's no charge here. Now, if you have a nitrogen bonded to a carbon, then the nitrogen is going to pull the electrons more strongly than the carbon. Get in there and make sure you can see those arrows. And that's going to mean that this nitrogen is going to have a partially negative charge, and this carbon is going to have a partially positive charge. This is the way it works for basically anything. So if you have a carbon next to a hydrogen, no charge. If you have a nitrogen next to an oxygen, no charge. If you have an oxygen next to an oxygen, no charge. If you have a carbon next to a nitrogen, then you're going to have a partially negative charge. When you have lots of negatives and positives in a molecule, that's when it becomes hydrophilic, polar, because there are different charges. That's it.